Let's see how much a plus five max airstream does. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode of Boost to the Top VGC 2021 where I climb the online VGC ladder and this like this episode, we're already in Ultra Ball tier. I know we ended the last one in Great Ball tier uh, and the reason is because I did literally one battle off camera and I won it, so now we're in Ultra Ball tier. Almost a Master Ball, there's only one rank of Ultra Ball, so I think we might be able to reach it by the end of the video, but I'm using a pretty interesting team that I made here. Uh, full details on this team will not be released until after this weekend for reasons. And you can figure out what those reasons are by watching my live stream this weekend where I do a thing that I'm not going to disclose. So link to my Twitch will be in the description down below if you guys want to watch that. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, if you enjoyed at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I'll be bringing you guys some daily VGC content. Also, check out the video I made earlier today where me and Ninth Gym built a team around Gigantamax Meowth and it actually went nearly undefeated. We only lost one match with that team. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited. Like, this is probably one of my favorite teams I've ever made. And I feel pretty... Uh, <laughs> I almost just choked on my own words there. Like, literal words. I feel pretty confident with the team. There we go. Spoke correctly that time. Watch me lose every match here. Alright, so... Ooh... A very similar team, very similar team. We're both going for that clean Moltres game plan. However, I think my Moltres lead is better than his. Um, I'll lead off Tapu Koko Moltres. In the back here, uh, they do have a Kartana, which is quite scary, but I think my Landris is a decent play for that, uh, as well as my Marowak, if I choose to go with that. I don't know if I want to bring my Tapu Fini. I think I want to bring just my own Kartana here. And we'll go with that. Seems like a pretty solid lead. I am dual screens Tapu Koko, so honestly, dual screens Tapu Koko, a lot, a lot more people need to run that. People are like, yeah, dual screens Reggie Alecki, and I'm like, okay, yeah, but consider the following: you still die to the earthquake afterwards, so what's the point? <laughs> Tapu Koko actually has like decent defenses, so it can take the earthquake relatively well if you uh, invest for that. But yeah, no, uh, I, I enjoy this team quite a bit. Worked hard on it. All right, let's get into it. Something I need to do before um, tomorrow's stream. I can't like give details, otherwise you guys won't check it out. <laughs> uh, I need to make sure I charge my Pro Controller because I do not want to play Pokemon with my Drifty Joy-Cons. Those are the worst. Nihiligo Incineroar, honestly a phenomenal lead for me, if I do say so myself. They might go for Trick Room, which honestly isn't terrible for me it honestly isn't terrible for me if they go tr if they try to go trick room here I think what my game plan is is to um hmm I feel pretty safe just going for the protect with the Moltres and switching in the Landris because Landris threatens this Nihiligo a lot if they decide to go for a max rockfall into the Moltres, it'll live it because, you know, protect. Uh, if they decide to go for a sludge bomb or anything into my Landorus slot, I'll be able to tank that. The reason I'm doing this instead of just setting up a screen, which probably is my best play, is purely because I'm concerned about the fake out coming out from the Incineroar, so I have to play carefully around that. I'm excited I finally made a team with Tapu Koko on it, because... This Coco was from that event back in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon where they finally gave out the shinies, and I never really got a chance to use it. And it just looks so clean next to the Moltres, dude. Kind of hoping to see a Power Gem. As they Dynamax, I am perfectly fine with that, dude. I am totally cool with that. Kind of hope they just oozed here. Because if they did just ooze, I'm not in a bad spot. And the fake out would be phenomenal as well. There's the use. Eat that up like Rhesus Puffs. And I'd say it's in their best interest here to uh, probably to go for the max rockfall to try to KO me. That's their life orb. Okay. There's the snarl. I'll live with that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch in my Coco for the Moltres and go for a max guard with my lander. Wow, he definitely just crit me, didn't he? No, it just... Are you Specs, dude? 
What? Okay, uh, get in the Coco. I definitely need to do this if I want to have any chance of living. And I will max guard. Because I'm not going to outspeed the Nihiligo. I need to get this light screen up ASAP. And hopefully I catch a max rock fall into my max guard, because then I should be fine. Alright. Time to max big boy Lando. As they max guard. Good call by them, but phenomenal guard. <laughs> phenomenal guard for me. There's the flare blitz. Yeah, they thought. They really thought. They really done diddly thought. They probably thought I was Choice Scarf or something. I'll go ahead and I'll set up a light screen here. And I will go for the Quake. And the reason I'm quaking into the Nihiligo is because it's a guaranteed one shot here. Um, and I'm probably going to lose my my Landers, and, er, my Landers anyways due to the Flare Blitz. Or I might not, who knows. Right? No, I won't because they're at minus one, but this is pretty safe. I don't need to set up a Reflect or anything. In late game, I can sweep with my Weakness Policy Moltres. As long as they don't crit, I should be fine. There's a light screen. They gonna rock fall? That's what I thought. Watch me live. Then watch me nay nay. Oh, we died. Hello? Sir? What? That that is uh that is terrifying. I just I just died to that. Did not expect to die. Okay. Guys, I'm scared. I'm scared. I mean, I can just send out the Kartana. Wow, what a waste of a Dynamax. There's their Landorus, which I'm cool with. That's pretty gangsta. I can set up my Reflect next turn anyways. And uh, threaten a one-shot on this Nihiligo with my Kartana. Really, once once the once the Nihiligo is gone, Moltres goes in, I think. That's the moral of this story. Alright, so I'll set up my Reflect. We'll go ahead and try to Smart Strike into the Nihiligo. If it decides to Protect, I think we're fine just because the Reflect goes up. It Protect. They're probably going to Superpower or something. Hopefully they're not Choice Scarf so I get my, my thing off. They are Choice Scarf. I'm cool with it. That's, that's Gangsta. I honestly don't think they take this still. They might even switch out the Nihiligo. They have to fake out, right? Here's my Reflect. And they are at plus two. How do I do this? I don't have Protect on my Tapu Coco is the issue. And I definitely don't take a Sludge Bomb. I think what I should do here is try to get in my Moltres and let my Tapu Coco go down. Uh, we'll get some chip damage. Going for the Thunderbolt and then the Hiligo. Or actually, do I want chip on this or do I want chip on Incineroar? I think I want chip on Incineroar, so we'll Thunderbolt and Incineroar. As they go for a Flare Blitz into my Moltres. And I'll get in my I'll get in my Kartana again for free. Because they're probably just gonna KO the They're probably just gonna KO the Tapu Coco. There it is. Yeah, I was going to say, there's no way it does that much. Thunderbolt for Chip. Go ahead and let them have the Nihiligo. Uh, KO the Tapu Coco here. I forgot to ask a question of the day. Question of the day, guys. What's your favorite new Galarian Pokemon? Let me know. And they've already revealed Protect on the Nihiligo. I think they always have to go for it here. 
If they want any chance of winning, they should always go for the Protect. I'll get in the Kartana and I'll actually just double down into this Incineroar. Because he could just switch out the Nihiligo for the um, for the Landorus and KO me right here with uh, Flare Blitz. So my play is the Sacred Sword as well as Air Slash. And hopefully it doesn't bite me in the butt. Because I think Air Slash after Sacred Sword should do it. And then I'm still in a position where I can KO the Nihiligo with a uh, Smart Strike. But they either protect or just don't stay in with this thing. There's the protect. Let's see if my double down worked. I would love to get plus one right here. Yeah, not quite. Good thing I air slashed. That should be enough. I think even after the berry. Ooh, was that citrus? That was a guav. Okay, maybe not. It's gonna be close. Flinch? Now they get it off. Okay, yeah. Unfortunately, that's going to be game. I made the right call, but I lost right there. It's a good game to my opponent. Nihiligo's just going to KO me. We'll go ahead and forfeit now. I feel like every video I've recorded so far this season has been... A, like, I, I do three battles, right? And it's always been an initial loss followed by two wins. That's always how it's been. Alright, we'll go ahead and forfeit here. Run, and hopefully we can pick up two wins here. If I got three, I would have definitely ended up in Master Ball tier by the end of the video, but I can live with that. I can live with just getting Master Ball tier in the next video. I've only played one video or one battle off camera so far in my climb from Pokeball tier this season, so. I mean, it's extra content. A lot of people want to see what it's like going from Pokeball to Master Ball. Continue battling here. Ow, no. <laughs> yeah, there's really... Like, when, you, when you're in Ultra Ball tier, there's really, like, no downside to losing that often. Because, like, if you're in Great Ball 10 or Great Ball 9, it takes forever. Because, like, you'll lose randomly and then drop down into 8. And sometimes you'll go on losing streaks. Ultra Ball is very forgiving. It's an extremely forgiving tier. Ooh, okay. I actually really like this team. This team is very good for me. I can go Tapu Koko, Moltres on lead. Um, Landris doesn't seem bad, but I'm also pretty scared of what he has for it. So I'll bring Tapu Finny here. He has a pretty decent matchup versus this team. In fact, a phenomenal one. And I think my last Pokemon... They don't have a Trick Room mode, so I don't want to bring Marowak. They also don't have an Electric type, so I'm fine without it. I'll just go Kartana. Seems pretty good. All right. Articuno, Tapu Fini. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a really good lead for me. Matter of fact, I don't see any situation where he stays in with this, uh, where he stays in with this Articuno. So I kind of want to go for game turn one. I can go for game right here. Yeah, there's no way you stay in with this Articuno, right? Because I threaten you way too hard. Let's go for game. I'm getting a nasty plot and uh, set up my light screen. Yeah, he would have to double into the Moltres, which is just super suboptimal for him. Yep, and he didn't Dynamax either, so regardless what happens, I think I just got it. He could also Trick Room, which is scary. No, he Freeze and Glares. Which, Psychic move goes into the Tapu Koko. We're going to eat that up. Hopefully no Freeze, or he can't Freeze us because Misty Terrain. 
I get my nasty plot off. If he dazzling gleamed or moon blasted, I'm in a really, really good spot. There's the moon blast. No special attack drop, please. As we eat that up, get our weakness policy. We're at plus four. We're at plus four, everyone. Uh, if you could all tell me what happens now, uh, I would appreciate that. Of course, you all know. We max airstream. Get those speed boosts. And I'm also just going to go ahead and uh, go for this Thunderbolt into this Articuno. Just in case it's Focus Sash and it tries to trick room up. Because we didn't see an item from it yet. Yeah, Moltres behind screens is such a scary Pokemon to face. Especially with Berserk. If you, if you With this team, if you end up going for um, Nasty Plot turn 1 and get, you get your weakness policy, as soon as you go below Berserk, you're in a really, really good spot to win because you're at plus 5. Oh, he was Electric Berry. Okay. There's the Air Slash. Not quite in Berserk range. It's going to Moon Blast again, which is funny. Get our speed boost. Now we outspeed everything in his side of the field, I believe. Here's the Moon Blast. No special attack drop, no crit. Get our Berserk. Yeah, things are going real good for us. Because we're going to one-shot that Tapu Fini. And I think I might try to get in the Cartana. Where's the Mammoth Swine? Do I want do I want to face this right now? Do I do I want to face this? I mean, he's not going to KO me. I think my play is to max guard and go for this Reflect. And what this will do is, um, yeah, he's going to Dynamax. It'll make it so I'll always take a hit from it in case he somehow survives. And I'd really like it if he could KO my Tapu Coco here. Because what I'll do next turn is just max Airstream and KO him with Kartana. These things sometimes run Assault Vest. I can kind of scout for that right now. Because if it, if it has a Life Orb, uh, he'll show it right now. You know, unless he doesn't target into the Moltres. Get the Reflect up. There's the Hailstorm. Do I target this Finny above all else? Not really. I think I always just target into the uh, Mammoth Swine. And get in the Kartana for free. So what I'll do is I'll just max Airstream Mammoth Swine. And get in Kartana so next turn I just beat it. Let's see how much a plus 5 max Airstream does. Nah, we- oh, almost. Do you focus Sash? He was focus Sash. I guess I could have just doubled there, but it doesn't matter. Because we have a speed boost in our Kartana now. This thing dies next turn. We go down. And this finish should be very scared, especially if it just decided to Moonblast. It would have to have Icy Winded here for them to have a chance to win, but... I think we're fine. There's the Moon Blast. We're behind screens and we're Assault Vest. And we resist that, so that does nothing. Oh no, our special attack drop. He's probably like, finally, but on the wrong Pokemon. Yeah, now I always just send in Tapu Koko and I go for um, Dazzling Gleam into Leaf Blade. There's the Surge. Alright, and we'll just go for this Dazzling Gleam to knock out this Mammoth Swine. We'll outspeed it, and we will get this Leaf Blade off on the Tapu Fenny. Doing a ton of damage, too. It might put it in range where the, uh... Because I'm not... I have, like, no attack investment. So it might put it in range where I KO it with the Dazzling Gleam, but who knows. As he protects... Honestly, I see no merit in that play. <laughs> I don't know what he tried to accomplish there. Hail damage? I don't know. I think his better chance of winning was by not protecting the Finny. 
because I'm still not speeding both of these things. Or maybe he's trying to go for Ice Shard. It could be the Ice Shard play. But I'm also behind Reflect, so it, it doesn't matter. Dazzling Gleam. Leaf Blade into the Tapu Fini. Same play. If he has Ice Shard, that would make sense why he went for that. Yep, there it is. It's not going to KO me, though, even with a crit. Leaf Blade there. Just KOs. And uh, my Dazzling Gleam will pick up the KO on the Mammoth Swine. I think that's game since I have plus one Kartana. All right. What is, that, what is he have in the back? Because we haven't seen the last Pokemon, I believe. Heatran. Yeah, that's just a win, because I just go for Thunderbolt and Sacred Sword. Even if he's Choice Scarf, I'll outspeed him, because I have plus one. So Thunderbolt and Sacred Sword. That should seal the deal. Yeah, just a straight-up KO. Nice. So, good game to my opponent there. Let's get one more for the video. I'm really glad the Moltres worked out there. Moltres is such a cool Pokemon in this format. Alright, continue battling. Ooh, two points, yay! <laughs> Let's get something good. I want to. I want to have like a really intense match for my last one. Okay. All right. So uh, Nihiligo, Rillaboom. I think we faced this team the other day. Yeah, we lost to this team. I think with the uh, with the Colossal team. Honestly, I'm game for this. I think. I think I can beat this. Let me lead off with Tapu Koko and Kartana. Just seems solid overall. We're going to bring Moltres in the back. And I kind of want to go Marowak. Yeah, Marowak seems pretty good here. There's the Metagross Incineroar. Now, unfortunately, I don't have Protect on my on my Tapu Koko, so I'm pretty scared of a Max Quake. And Fake Out on Kartana makes sense here, as well as just a Raw Flare Blitz. I think I'll always be able to get off my thing. We'll go for the Reflect. And I'll try to get in my Moltres. If he doesn't fake out here, uh, we'll, we'll get the Reflect off. Which I'm willing to risk, I think. As he Dynamaxes, makes sense. Hopefully no reflect on or no fake out on the Tapu Koko. That's the best case scenario right now. As he fakes out, nice. Okay. Get my reflect off. I should always take this Max Quake now. Maybe. I'm not certain. <laughs> Probably not. I already forgot if I did. I mean, it's non-stab. I calced for Landris's Earthquake. Oh, cool. We take it. Two screens. Two. Haha. -ha. How many screens will we get? Two. Two screens. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Alright. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just get my other screen up. It's just ideal. Light screen. I'll protect here in case he has, um, yeah, I'm going to protect here in case he decides to go for an Ice Punch, which some of them are carrying at the moment. In fact, I think a lot of them are carrying it. So I'll be able to get my Weakness Policy as well, and then just one-shot him with Max Darkness. Let's 
to protect. Get the light screen. And Tapu Koko has done its job. I have a light clay, so these things are going to be up for at least seven more turns. There's the steel spike. All right. I can live with that. He's doing no damage. And we're stalling out his Dynamax. Hopefully he just goes for a Flare Blitz in my Coco. I'd rather get that free switch, to be honest. Burning Jealousy. Okay. He tried. Doesn't quite KO the Coco. Uh, I guess my play here would just be to get some chip damage on the Metagross. And I could just Dynamax. Do I do this? Because he's going to Steel Spike me, right? I always take the hit. I just don't want to give him Weakness Policy yet. That's my main That's my main issue here. Hmm. We'll just get some chip damage. Thunderbolt the Metagross. And I suppose I'm fine with giving him Weakness Policy, considering we beat him in the end anyways. Or actually, nah. I'm not giving him Weakness Policy. I'm just going to Airstream the Incineroar. And you'll see why. You'll see why here in a second. Because I guarantee you, he's going to have something in the back that outspeeds me, and that's going to be an issue if I don't right now. I don't mind getting burnt on my uh, my Moltres. The damage is pretty much inconsequential as long as I'm Dynamaxed. It's Thunderbolt for damage. Max Airstream. And now, I'm not in too bad of a position. I'm not in too bad of a position. Because I'm going to get a free switch in with my Marowak. That's doing nothing. Relatively speaking, nothing. <laughs> going to get a Berserk boost too. And then I'll make it so I always one-shot him here. Burning Jealousy, don't mind that. Going to get burnt there. And while he could chip away at me, I feel comfortable. Because I can send in my Kartana here on the possible Nihiligo. As his Dynamax ends, and I still have two turns of this. Because I think a Nihiligo would want to come out here. Or I could just bait him. We'll just bait him. Go into Marowak. Max Darkness, the, the Metagross. I'll just bait him there. <laughs> There's the Protect as he tries to Weakness Policy. Doesn't do anything because of that Special Defense boost. I feel like I'm throwing this game now. That Protect made me feel like I'm throwing the game. It's doing nothing with that attack. I mean, the Metagross always goes down next turn is the thing. Go for a Protect here. I don't care with the Metagross right now with my um, my Marowak, but I also don't think he goes for anything except for a fire move, so I'll protect. I want to get in the Kartana for free though, that's, that's my main thing, I really wish I could get in Kartana for free. Hopefully he went for the dark move here. If there isn't a... I think if there isn't a Nihiligo in the back, I, I just win. Here's the U-turn. I'm actually kind of okay with that. While he may be recycling his Intimidate, I'm outspeeding this Nihiligo. 
And even under a trick room, I'm not in a bad spot. Just because I threatened to KO with my um with my Marowak. So I think what I'm gonna do here is protect and get in the uh and get in the Kartana. But he could also try to predict that, which is scary. I think that's still my best play though. Now the burn damage is actually going to matter a bit more because I have like, what, two or three turns? Three or four. I know it's Seed Kartana. Or I know it's Seed Nihiligo. Because I believe James Beck used this team, so I'll protect here. On this fake out. And then this next turn, what I'm going to do is actually just double into the, um, into the Incineroar. Hopefully I didn't try to predict that. There's the fake out. Tell me you power jumped. There it is. Okay. It's doing nothing. I win under Trick Room with my um, with my Marowak. So I don't mind him setting it up as long as I remove the Incineroar. So I'll just go for Sacred Sword and Air Slash. And hopefully this doesn't play out like it did the first game. And he'll go Protects. We call it. If it doesn't play out like it did the first game, we, we should be fine. Alright, we connect. It's going to be doing a lot. And I think we're in range of Sacred Sword KOing. Nice. That's plus one beast boost. We're outspeeding with our Moltres. I think we win. There's the Gashon. Yeah, that should be a win. Um, I don't need to make any predictions here. I'll just double into the Nihiligo in case it's Sash. And go for a Fiery Wrath. Because Gastrodon doesn't really change anything. Here we go. Does a lot, actually. Plus one. Wow. Smart strike that thing, and bam. You're out of here. I wonder what he goes for. No, he just flinches. Beautiful. That flinch definitely didn't matter, though. He had no outs. So we take some burn damage, but we live... Reflect finally wears off. Like I said, that Reflect was there for the whole game. Go for this uh, Leaf Blade into the boy. We'll also Fiery Wrath for the thumbnail. I think we already have a good thumbnail, though, so <laughs> it doesn't even matter. But yeah, uh, that's going to be it for today's session. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate you. Be sure to check out my live stream this weekend to figure out why I'm not showing you the team. But yeah, with that, I'm going to call it. Have a nice night. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, yeah, leave a like if you liked, whatever. I don't know why I can't end today's video. I'm just, like, messing up speaking the ending. Have a nice night, guys. Bye. I'm cutting myself off.